Hi everyone, it's Nicole McGuirk for TwoPeasInABucket.com with this month's Making the Most of Your Die Cutting Machine class. The November class shows ideas for creating your own faux chipboard for your scrapbook pages, cards, or 3D projects using die cutting machines. For my project, I used the silhouette to create my faux chipboard and in the Silhouette America software, in the search box, I typed in pumpkin because I knew that there was a title I wanted, and I'm just dropping it into my software, then grabbing one of the corners and dragging it to get my desired size. I want it to stretch across most of my 12 by 12 layout, and so I think I Put it at about nine and a half inches long. And I need to create these faux chipboard accents out of craft cardstock. I find it is the best to layer about five layers on top of each other. And it might sound like it's quite a bit of work, but really it's quite simple once you get everything cut out. So I'm just flipping these and trying to get them to fit on my cutting mat the best. This best way to get the most on one sheet because as you see here I'm only going to get three on this sheet so I'll have to cut a couple out of another sheet of cardstock. This is great for maybe you want to use those electronic or digi die cutting files and to and would rather that your title or your accents not be so flat, just cut out of paper, but rather have them more, have more texture like chipboard. And I found that this really adds a big punch to your projects. It, it really looks like chipboard and it gives you that dimension. But you can use, customize your own files, create with a silhouette, you can create, you know, any of your own titles that you want using fonts in your library. So now I'm simply going to click the cutting box and I'm going to, I always choose cardstock 80 for any cardstock cutting and it'll choose the pink cutting tip and then you can click double cut. You don't have to cut and paste and it will cut out each of these twice, which gives you a really nice clean cut. The next thing I want to cut is an accent for my page. You can do more than just titles or, or words or letters. And I'm going to use these corn stalks. And I've left my pumpkin patch title there because I want to get the scale right for my corn. So I'm making sure that that's going to work together well. And this particular corn stalk has a lot of detail to it. There's like lots of little pieces. And I had, I had originally thought that I would use them all and layer them all. Um, but after they all cut out and they're so detailed, I decided that I was only going to use those two main pieces there that you see on the left. I'm going to go ahead and move my title down. I always like to keep them until I'm finished with the project just in case I would have to cut something out then I don't have to remember what size it was. So I'm just moving um, my corn up there to the corner and clicking the duplicate button so that I can copy that several times. I can get about four on this particular sheet. If I had ungrouped it, I could have gotten all of them on one sheet, but like I said, I originally thought that I would go ahead and use them all. You could also consider, I used my faux chipboard just as is, but if you adhered all of them together, you could paint them, ink them, anything like that, just like you would regular chipboard. So I'm just getting those all aligned there. And once I get those cut out, I'll be ready to put my layout together. Consider trying this with your Cricut, your um, Slice, any of your other electronic die cutting machines like the Gazelle or Wishblade, you could do it with any of those. And your manual die cutters too. You just won't have as much, um, be able to change sizes and things obviously of your shapes. But you could create some really nice dimensional accents with your manual die cutters as well.
Now I'm ready to put my layout together and I'm simply adhering the pattern paper I chose for this layout and I've already kind of pre-cut everything down. However, that was kind of, I'd already stuck that down and it's kind of big. So I need to pop up that top piece and tuck this one underneath. I'm making a 10 inch square in the center of my layout. I do that often. I usually try to piece it together with several different pattern papers just for fun. This is a 10 inch photo collage border I created. Each of the photos is two by three. And now I'm just going to kind of lay out some of my pieces and make sure I have everything where I want it. I printed my journaling out on a 10 inch strip of craft card stock as well. And I'm gonna use a couple of ribbons to divide the photo border from my journaling. I did round at the bottom two corners of the journaling with the corner chomper. Now the lacy ribbon on top is from the new tinsel and twig ribbon card from the girls papery and the yellow is a kind of velour or velvet ribbon that was just in my stash i don't really know where that one's from I've had it for a long time i thought it looked kind of pretty layered underneath the lacy ribbon like that you can just see the yellow peek through that. Go ahead and adhere my photo strip now that I kind of have everything laid out how I want it. I also did not speed up the video today, so I apologize if it's a little slow or anything like that. I've had a, several requests that people want to kind of see it more in real time, so that's what I'm attempting to do today. I forgot to put my piece of vellum on the bottom part of my layout. I was going to lay it over those cute little pennants there on that My Mind's Eye True Blue pattern paper. So I just need to trim it down a little bit since I forgot to add it. And then I'm going to have to peel up my journaling. So really carefully, I'm going to take my ribbon off first. Try not to damage my layout in the process. Sometimes you forget to do things and there are ways to fix it if you just remember to go slow. I could have got the undo out, but I didn't. Just decided to pull it up instead. Need to pull that up just a tad bit more. Then I'll put that vellum right there. Flip my journaling back down. Then we'll have to kind of reassemble it a little bit. I really like how vellum mutes the pattern papers or whatever you're laying it over. It really helps if you, like I'm gonna lay a couple of photos there along the bottom and I just felt that they kind of got lost in that pattern paper. As much as I love that pattern paper, I want my photos to take center stage. There's that lace piece. And I'm going to use the tiny attacher to attach the ribbons to both ends here. And it just keeps flipping up a little bit. So I'm gonna to have to adhere it before I use the tiny attacher. And I just decided to use some of the spray adhesive, the Krylon spray adhesive, to do that. And I'm just using something out of my trash. And I'm not gonna spray it right there. I'll spray it off to the side to protect my work surface. I don't wanna get any spray adhesive on my photos or my layout. And then I'll just simply lay that right over that vel uh, velvet ribbon. And 
And then once I've done that, I can take the tiny attacher and secure both of those ends. That's one of my favorite ways to attach ribbon or trims th or things like that to pages is to use the tiny attacher. It really does help secure it. I'm going to wrap that ribbon around the end and staple it a couple times. And do the same thing over on the other side. Another thing to note is this My Mind's Eye collection is called True Blue and the, the other collection has more pinks and it's called Tickled Pink. So you would think more like boy layouts or girl layouts, but you can see how well these colors work for an autumn layout. I love that the papers aren't so theme specific that you can't use them for other things. And then these are my photos on the bottom and I just resized them a little bit, made them a little bit smaller. Not quite as small as the two by three photos, but not real, not as big as a four by six either. And they're just going to kind of go down here near the bottom of the page. I'm going to tuck this one underneath the other one, trying to decide how I like them the best. And then there's a little bit extra. I'm going to secure that vellum a little bit, I hide my adhesive underneath those photos. And then I have these cute little baubles and things from the new Making Memories Reverie, I think, collection it is. And I really think these are fun. They coordinate nicely with the colors of my page and the autumn feel of the page. So I'm going to just use some glue dots to adhere those right there along my border. I just made a little collage of flowers there. And now I'm ready for my die cutting part. Here's all of the pieces that I die cut earlier and I'm going to use this Krylon spray adhesive and I'm going to spray those so I get good coverage on the back. And I'm of course I'm not going to do that over my layout. I'll move that aside and do it elsewhere. I usually do it inside of a box so that that spray doesn't get on anything else. So I'm going to spray them really good and then I'll start adhering them to my layout. And what I find generally works best is if you're going to use the cardstock as is, like you're not going to paint it or ink it or anything like that, you're just going to simply use it as craft cardstock to look like raw chipboard. Adhere the first layer to your project and then layer from there. The project gives it a lot more stability than trying to stack these little letters one on top of the other, um, just like on your work surface or on your table or anything like that. So I find that this just is a lot easier, plus it, you can kind of figure out where everything goes and then you just simply layer them one on top of the other from there. And I'm using um, just a craft knife to peel them up for my paper there because they are really sticky and make your fingers kind of gross but it's worth it. I really love the, the look of this. And depending on what design you use, this one of course had all of these individual letters so it's a little bit more time consuming but the next word, the patch, is a script so it's only one and it's easy to use. So now I'm ready to peel it up and you just kind of have to be a little bit careful because you don't want to rip it. And then that'll kind of overlay that photo strip. And it looks, it looks good the way it is, but once you add several layers of this car, of the cardstock on top of each other so it looks like chipboard, it really gives a nice dimensional look that you can't achieve with a single, single layer of die cut paper. So here are a couple more of this one. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere those there before I move on to the rest. And I won't make you watch me position all of them, but just making sure that it lines up one on top of the other. Now before I go and add the rest of the layers on the word pumpkin, I want to add a little bit of stamping right above my title using some Allie Edwards stamps from Technique Tuesday. 
So I'm just laying those out to see how I want those to look before I actually get them put on an acrylic block and stamp them. I usually like to lay them out first. That's the great thing about clear stamps so that I can make sure that I like how they look. And then I have a little word border here that coordinates that I think I'm going to add to. So I'm just kind of moving everything up, making sure that it'll all work together. Lay it out, and then I'll pick it up with my acrylic block. And I'm just going to use some brown ink to stamp that right above the word pumpkin. Line it up, and there it is. Clean that up really quick. And then I will reposition those bigger script letters, get them laid out how I want. I want to pick them up at the same time with my acrylic block. So I want to be really careful and precise in getting them right where I want them. Pick them up and ink them up really good and stamp them there right above my title. I apologize, my head's in the way again. Just wanted to make sure I had that nice and straight. <laughs> and there we go. Very easy. I combined, combined stamps from two different stamp sets of Allie's. They'll be linked in the products at Two Peas in the Bucket on this project. And from here, I'm going to go ahead, and here is the corn stalks going to be created the same way. I'm going to just layer them one on top of the other with spray adhesive, and then adhere them to my layout. For more information on this project, please visit twopeasinabucket.com on November 5th, 2010. Thanks for watching.